Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to this game's tutorial. So, um, in this episode, we actually make the button work down here, as you can tell. Now it can switch in between menus, and if we have a look in our canvas, here they are. So, it disabled the last one, and it re-enables the next one. We also added the Abilities tab, the Research, and the Currency one. Alright guys, so without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so let's do our second part of the UI tutorial. So right here we've got our bottom UI and we only have the stats panel right now, but um, if we look at our buttons, we should also have the abilities panel, the research panel, and also the currency panel. It's going to be fairly easy. I'm going to duplicate this one, the stats panel, and type in abilities panel. Now I'm going to remove the whole content of that. The stats list, actually I'm going to remove all the container except one. We are actually going to rename that container for ability container and let's also rename the list so ability list abilities like so. And now in order to see what I'm doing I'm going to turn off the stat panel just temporarily like so. Okay so um, I've got my panel now as for the ability, I'm going to keep the same exact layout. So what I'll do is actually take this, drag and drop it inside of the prefab folder and then inside of the UI. Now, so we have multiple ability, then we can just go ahead and just pound more in here. But right now, let's start with a single one. I'm going to rename it to say something like hair strike. We're not, we haven't done the design for that just yet, but um, at least have something ready. And instead of being a, lo a button that you can click on, it's actually going to be a button that you can click on but to use. So instead of leveling, we're actually going to be like only putting a use button. And right next to it, instead of showing a level, let's actually show a timer. So something of the sort, and just for the sake of seeing what I'm doing, I'm going to turn off the recap menu temporarily as well. And that is um, that is how our ability bar is actually going to look. So say the first one is an airstrike, and then the second one could be some kind of um, power up for the tower, temporary power up for the tower, something like that. Right. And that's going to be it for the ability panel. Now copy it again. Oops, only once. And I'll turn off the ability panel so I can see what I'm doing with the research panel this time. Having troubles writing for some reason. Research panel. And uh, for this one, I'd like to change things a little bit. So this is the research list. And let's actually change the layout of what this is ha uh, going to look. So this is the research container. Let's drag and drop this right in the UI. And uh, what exactly can we do? So I'm going to take the title and let's just say. Um, normal attacks now deal splash damage and I'll put it on best fit and I'll just reduce the height of this like so and just move it up so it's going to take the whole um, the whole panel in width well the, the whole remaining in width and uh, do we need a start level we don't need that as far as the use goes, uh, I'm actually going to reduce the size of that button, so maybe 75 in width and 40 in height. Going to bump it up right here, and this is going to be the price, so X500, and then I have like an icon, so I'll just put an I like this. And maybe add another text that is going to show how long the research is going for. So, one hour, zero, zero minute. Yeah, just something like that. And that could actually do the job. And uh, I'll just rename this to research icon. And then the next one to research title. So it's a lot of, um, it's a lot of work, but at least we have something rolling now. now Research container is right here. I'm going to hit apply to save it as a prefab. And 
we should now be good to go for the research panel. Once we have multiple, it's going to look like this. Whoops. Like this. Oh, one more thing I'd like to add is actually an image. So UI image, I'm still inside of the research container. And this image is going to be the same width as the text, so something like that, approximately. It doesn't have to be exactly on the pixel, but let's say 275, and as for the height, something really small, like 30. And this is going to be like a progression bar. So when you, once you start the research, then you have this progression bar, and it's just going to fill itself as the research goes. So right about here. And research progress. Now under research progress, I'll also add another UI text and I'll center it. I'll actually do um, a stretch on both horizontal and vertical axis, put everything on zero and this is going to be the time. So maybe it has been um, 0, .0, .0 out of 1.0. Center the text and here we go. Alright, now of course you know that everything in here is going to be changed uh, using code once the game is running. Okay, let's actually close this off by hitting apply. And here we go, that's our research. Alright, now we are going to go ahead and duplicate, uh, let's just go ahead and duplicate the research panel and this final panel is going to be the currency. Alright, so now the research panel is done. Let's go ahead and just close it off. And as for the currency panel, we are going to first start by renaming everything. So, currency list. This is the currency container, which we will go ahead and just drag and drop inside of our UI prefab folder. Then this is the currency icon. This is, I don't know why it says icon here, but it should be the currency title. We are going to get rid of the progress bar. So what is this exactly? This is the progress bar, okay, so we'll get rid of that. And um, we seem to have a little bug here where I don't, I don't see my, uh, oh, there it is, the button, never mind. And um, as far as the button goes, I think I'm going to have a cell button. So maybe add it here, this is the cell currency button. But I'm not quite sure on this design just yet. But let's just put it in case. So um, the height is going to be 75 minus 10, so 65. And then we put the position dot y on zero. Okay. And once we've got this, we can actually move the title to something more um, welcoming. I guess we are going to expand this. Now, of course, this is this is my UI, but you can make your UI the way you want. It doesn't really uh, matter too much as long as you keep it instead of prefabs then we can work with that a little bit later on I'm also going to remove the best fit okay so the first currency might be say gold ingots or let's just say iron ingots because they're less expensive and we also have um, next to that we should have the amount that we currently have so iron ingots and let me just copy this from the stat panel And there it is. Okay, so instead of actually having level written here, we are going to have an X for the amount of things we have right now times, say, 100. Now, I'm also going to mess around with this a little bit. Uh, maybe width of 50, height of 50. Then I can move this over here, and for some reason, the 100 doesn't seem to appear. Might be too small still. Oh, there it is. Okay, so I've got this. Everything seems to be working just fine. And I'm just going to repeat myself once more. These are going to be dynamic in the end, so the values are going to be filled in automatically. Uh, maybe not for the title, maybe not for um, what's written inside of the buttons, well, at least for the values, that's for sure. We need to change them while the game is running. 
All right, so we've got all of this. Let's actually apply, hit apply, so our prefab stays the same. And here we go. This is our currency. If we turn it off, we go under research. This is our research. Let's turn it off. This is, these are our abilities. Oops. We're gonna have more later, of course. And then these are our stats which are hidden by the abilities right now. And there they are. Okay. Now we need to actually change um, these menu while we're playing the game. So finally, we're gonna go back to writing some scripts. The first one being the game UI script. So right click on your script folder, go ahead and create a new script. And I called mine game UI. Now let's pull up that code. What we're going to need in this one is fairly simple. So we're going to be taking in two arrays, um, one of game object and one of buttons. So in order to have a, a button array, we need to include Unity Engine.UI. Okay, so public game object array, this, this is going to be our panels. And then public button array, these are our buttons. As simple as that. Now, private void. Um, Actually, let's make this public. So public void navigate to int menu index. So we're going to be calling this function from our buttons. And what's going to happen in this one is we are going to turn off everything and just enable the one that is currently active. So let's do a nice for loop. So for int i is equal to zero, as long as i is smaller than panels dot length, then i plus plus. And what we're going to be doing in here is we're going to say if i is equal equal to menu index, that means this is the index of the menu we need to turn on. So panels at index i dot set active is now equal to true. And we're also going to say buttons, oops, buttons at the index i dot select. So we can have some kind of effect on our button. Um, so we might like highlight them or something of the sort. Okay, so if it is not menu index, so if i is not equal to menu index, that means it's the panel we need to turn off. So panels at the index i that's set active to false. All right. And that is going to be the function we're going to be calling from our button. Now, when the game starts, we'd like to actually turn all of them off because right now, if we look at our game, they're all off, but uh, we might actually want them to be like this. Let's go ahead and just turn all of them off when we start the game. So we're going to be doing that in a private void start. And inside of the start, we're going to say navigate to the index zero, which is simply going to pop up our first panel. Well, it's going to do run this code actually. And um, this code pretty much just turn everything off and then enable the stats. Okay, um, in order to contain this script, we are going to need another object in the scene. So a new game object. This is going to be the game UI. Let's move this to the origin and add the game UI script right here. Okay, so game UI takes in two arguments right here. It takes in a two array, the one, the first one being the panels and the other one being the buttons. So let's make sure that we expand the bottom UI right here and also the navigation bar. So back on our game UI, the panel size is going to be four and the button size is going to be four as well. We are going to drag and drop them in the same order. So stats first, ability second, research third, currency fourth. Um, as for the buttons, you, you start from here, so stats, abilities, research, and then currency. Like so. And all we need to do to actually test this out is to go back on our buttons. So right here, let's click on stats. And we're going to put something in the onClick event. So let's click the plus sign, then drag and drop our game UI in here. Game UI and navigate to zero, that is fine. Same thing for abilities. So navigate to, this is one. 
Now research, drag and drop game UI, navigate to the index number two, and finally currency, navigate to the third index like so. Okay, uh, we're pretty much ready to test it out. Let's re-enable our recap menu, and here it is. And start from the preloader like we always do. All right, so here's our splash screen, touch to start. We're going to hear button, and those are pretty much our stats. Now let's move over to our abilities. Here they are. Research, same thing. And finally, currency. Here we go. So we got everything working, and it's really awesome. Now, um, if you notice, if I hold my click right here, we still move, and we might want to be fixing that. So that's something I'm going to be taking note of. And we're going to be fixing it quite um, quite fast. But right now, that's going to be pretty much it for this episode. We Again, we did a lot of UI, but um, it's needed for this game at least. So uh, We got this out of the way. We, we are almost ready to put some good values in there and to make it interactable. But uh, before we do that, we still need to create the stats list, a real stats list, and also the currencies. Well guys, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you learned something or if you enjoyed this video, please leave me a like. I really appreciate that. If you have any question or comment, you can also leave them in the comment section below and I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. Other than that, um, thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one.